making sure I'm plugged in. Good morning, good, good afternoon, rather, good morning. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 713. And the topic today is the inverse of yesterday. Um, so today's topic is men, how not to lose her. Tips on how to begin dating successfully. Yesterday was about helping women date more successfully, which ended up being kind of a crossover between the two. So this one's going to be towards the men specifically. However, there may be tips for the women included because again, these are never, well, sorry, again. If you haven't seen broadcast before, they're never scripted. So we'll see where it goes. Before I jump in, let me choose myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and why I do these talks every day. <laughs> 713 of them. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't figured that out already. I'm a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm actually a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which inspires my work and also informs these talks I do every day called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart that started around November 2016, actually December 2016, I think, after the election. Anyway, that's another story, but it inspired me to do these talks every day um, for a couple of years now. And so the topic today is men. There's some things we can do better when it comes to dating, I'll put it that way. <laughs> you read the title and explain everything else. I'm, I'm playing with where I want to start with this because first of all, as I said already, and I make this more blatant, men, step up. The quality of what we bring to women when we're dating and in a relationship could definitely be improved for a lot of men out there. I'll put it that way, simply. And I'm going to offer you some tips, but that I'm going to make some points along the way that I'm going to make very clear. For one thing, we we'll talk about how you can be more respectful towards women underneath everything because that's the thing that a lot of men don't do. A lot of men's ways of interacting with women, to be honest, is kind of derogatory. It's not elevating the conversation, it's not elevating her, and it's also sometimes speaking down to or treating the, or looking down to them. Treating them like they're the weaker sex, which may be physically true, but in no other way is it true. So that's just to let you know what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> let me give you some simpler st steps, simpler steps, simpler tips either way, to start with, to get you going. And I'll come back to this along the way where it seems to fit in the conversation. So first of all, and I've talked about this one before in other conversations, but I'll put it in this case, is from the get-go, act like a gentleman. And I mean this from the point of view of behavior, but also awareness. So behaviorally, be a man who is caring enough and respectful enough and present-minded enough to open the door for her. To help her on with her coat, help her off with her coat when she's get, when you're in the restaurant, wherever you're going. To pull out a chair for her so she sit down, offer her, you know, stand up when she leaves the table, even if you want to be really um, visible, which is something is is very nice to do. Uh, walk when you're walking down the street, walk on the street side with them away, as in further from the building. Now, in some places that might be safe to do so, but do it that way so that way you can be more protective of her energetically. And this is the thing, is that. And it's interesting to say it this way, but a lot of gentlemanly conduct comes out of the place that a man is defending the honor of a woman or respecting a woman by showing his honor to her. So in some ways it does imply the woman's weaker, but it's not that way. It's out of respect. And that's a big piece of the work that we can do as men around women, period. But suddenly it comes to dating and relationship. So first of all, gentlemanly conduct as a wide, um, well, it's about 17 points right there as in seven, sorry, 17 keys right now, not points, keys right there, because just doing certain gentlemanly th acts of conduct and respect can really up your game and make you a much more attractive possibility for a relationship with this woman. That's what you want, yes? Second piece. Um, this is what I talked about yesterday too, is um, don't be needy. And I mean this really clearly, because just as the women, as I said yesterday, a lot of women, they can come across as needy towards the men, which makes it really hard to be around. Guys, when you put out, when you put the energy of neediness off, and I'm gonna give you some illustrations of that in a moment, you're gonna chase the women away. If you are so um, <laughs> subtly or overtly ogling her body, that's a form of desperation too, because you're hungry. Now. There's levels of this you can play with, where you can have to make it more amorous and more um, 
inviting when it's done the right way. And of course, the, uh, the, let me back up and say this. This, this this is when you're a few dates in. First date, however, to show interest in her sexiness is one thing, but to be drooling over her assets, physical assets, I mean, rather than entering into a conversation with her is not what I'm talking about. I should say is the opposite of that. So if you're doing that, you're off, you're off base completely, you're off course. So having appreciation for her looks by saying, you know, you look beautiful, you look attractive versus, wow, your legs go all the way up to the moon or something equally ridiculous at times, is not the way to approach. So watch your language. <laughs> That's the second one always. It's like, watch how you speak to her. Because a lot of men don't remember that women are equally, if not more intelligent and have feelings and are human beings, which is like, it sounds so simplistic to say it that way. But so many men I have watched around treat women, talk about women, look towards women, think of women, from what I can tell, as second class citizens. And I'm very pedantic about that not being the case in my world. That's another agenda. So being desperate and being driven by the sexual energetic of the get go is not what I recommend. Now, in rare circumstances, there are situations where a woman and man have such chemistry that it's so overwhelming that maybe all that happens is they come together sexually, in which case that previous instruction might be different. But the desperation piece, which I put before that, is it's funny. As soon as, as soon as I said that, Duran Durang song, Duran Durang song goes through my head, "Hungry Like the Wolf." Okay. To be wolf-like can be good, but when you're coming from a place of you haven't had sex in six years and it's avert on your face, isn't a respectful thing to do to around a woman. It may come up with a conversation, but not recommended to actually do that overt. So desperation is not sexy. So that's number two. Number three, let's see what else is in, is in the ethers to talk about in this context. <laughs> hmm. Actually, let me go back a second. I want to go back to number one about the gentleman gun up piece because this was on my mind. A friend of mine posted this beautiful, um, not story, but but memory of something happened with this guy she was going out with, and how when he came to pick her up, he came. And this is to illustrate the point. So this again, gentlemanly conduct, opening the door, context. So he shows up to pick her up from where she was uh, living at the time. I think she was her parents at the time. So this was going back a few years. She was all excited and very wonderful, and then they went back to the car. He got into his side of the car, she went out on the other side, and was about to get inside of the car and didn't. In her wisdom, I would put it, she basically stood there waiting for him to open the door. Because the thing is, part of this, men had to have more um, confidence, more success with women, is treat them with respect. And part of that thing I talked about in gentlemanly conduct is to be willing to open the doors. And I've said that about opening the doors and you think, oh yeah, buildings, walking into buildings, open the door for them, that's great. Letting them go ahead of you in the elevator is great. Doing things that put them ahead of you so that you can basically be the guardian angel behind the way, behind, that's one way of thinking about it, is a good thing to do. Cars are one of those things that we forget. I've forgotten myself in the past, so let me be transparent about this. But nowadays when I'm with a woman who is my passenger, of course, I haven't had a car for a while, so I'm going to get back in the habit soon, um, is to open the passenger side door first. It doesn't matter if it's unlocked or not. Like, you know, it's like you get in the driver's side, unlock the doors, so they can get in. It's like, no. Be gentlemanly enough to go around the passenger side, open the door for them, let them get in, and then once they're seated, close the door behind them, making sure not to catch their coat or their dress in the door. And it's, it's, This is so simplistic in my head, but for some people, this is a wake-up call. So hopefully this has helped you get some clarity. All right, so that was number one, reinforced. Number two, don't be desperate. Number three, let's see what else is in the, again, in the ethers. Because I'm, I'm remembering what I talked about yesterday. I was talking yesterday, for those who haven't seen my broadcast yesterday, which was number was 712, talking about how women can have more success in dating and in relationship as well, um, for beginning etiquette and steps to take. So I'm attempting to remember some of those because they apply to both genders. Um, oh, this in a way does tie to number one, but I'll make it number three because it's about you presenting yourself. When you're going on a date for the men, I mean, it's the truth for the ladies too. Again, this, uh, some of this stuff is definitely on both sides of the gender, but for men especially, dress the part. I 
I've talked about this on the broadcast, but I'll make the point here again that when you're going on a date, dress the part, meaning dress to fit the environment. If you're going to a nice restaurant, don't show up in flip flops and torn jeans. If you're going to go to the beach, then flip flops and t- torn jeans may be fine. So, context. So, I'm saying dress the part, not saying you have to dress your best or everywhere you go. But if you're going to go somewhere nice, put in your clean jeans without the holes in them. You know, dress a bit nicer, put on closed toed shoes, be presentable to be elevating the conversation. Because again, it's like gentlemanly conduct, but also on the same level is you're showing signs of respect to the woman you're dating or you're going out with for the first time. So dress the parts a key part of this too. Number four, I talked about this yesterday in a different way, but I want to give it this sense, is have an honorable intention. Some men out there who still do this, and I know it happens quite often for some men, is the, the, the intention when they meet a woman is to get him into bed. First date doesn't matter. They're just like, that's their focus, irrelevant. I'm talking about having a date with having an, an, a respectful intention, which may be, which could be something like this, for example. First date when you go out with a woman is your intention is to ensure that they have a great time, that they enjoy being with you, and that you leave them wanting more. And I don't mean that in bed. <laughs> For some of you thinking that way. I'm talking about that as a way of respecting. Because again, if you're looking to go on a date with a woman that you want to go further than that first date, then you want to help, you want to have a progress. Head, no. You want to have a direction you want to go in um, progress to move forward. I'm going to say another way. <coughs> Excuse me. What you're intending to do by having even wanting more is that you're not trying to use up all your energy in the first date. That's what I would say. So that piece is about having um, a clear understanding of what's available by seeing the fact that if you go on a first date, it isn't the only date. Now, if it is the only date, that's unfortunately maybe on you or maybe on her because you may fact realize that at the end of the first date, you don't want to see her again. That's okay. It's okay to, make, to be clear that way. But at the same time, having an intention, if you do like what's happening, to save something for later in a way, to keep opening to possibility is a good idea. Because then it creates a continuity and also an invitation to the next possibility of getting together. So that's number four. Three? That's number four. Number five, this one is actually for post date. I recommend if you want to date with somebody, especially if you do like them, is a text or a call after the date. Meaning that, um, this is one of the things I, did, I used to do a lot and I still do with my friends, is if you're driving different places because you didn't pick her up and maybe because it's first date you met in a neutral place and you have each other's phone numbers, is have her text you when she gets home. Just because you want to make sure she gets home safe. It's, it's a simple thing. But I've, I've had so much gratitude from friends, female friends, not just in relationships, but female friends who liked that because they felt like they had, a, they had someone watching over them. And I don't mean stalking, <laughs> but respecting them and having that sense of concern and care. So that's, but also at the same time, so another part of that is, is a text or a call the next day to thank, for the, to thank her for the date, because yes, even though, she, you, even though you may have done all the work, you still thank her for the date because it's respectful for women. And if you want to get to her again, invite her to look at, and, and now, sorry, I'm going to come back. Uh, no, no, no. Let me finish this thought and come back to it. <laughs> Talk about when you want to get together again. Now, where my mind just went, it's a screeching halt was, you can do this on the date as well. If the date's working out wonderfully and it's going great, you may be checking calendars before you even leave the first date about when you want to get together the second time. That's, tight, that's fine too. I doubt you'll be planning the rest of your life together just yet, but certainly the next date is okay. So that's another one. So that's number five, I think. One, two, three. Yeah, that's five. Number five. Okay, that's five. Okay, let's see if there's a sixth one in there. There's a lot more I know I can talk about when you're seeing what's fresh and what's ready and what's in the ether for me to share this time. So one more. I think there's one more in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is a double one. So I'll give you part. This will be part six and part seven. Um, don't force anything. Don't cross any lines without permission. Again, back to respect, but it's a similar level, but it's also on another level of, of being um, appreciative and honoring, respecting who she is. So don't cross any line, don't cross that line that is 
moving to predator predator energy that's not healthy and the second part which is really which is number seven i guess it is number seven is be okay if she says she doesn't go on another date i mentioned number two about not being desperate this is the other end of that or the other which is another part of that which is if she says at the end of the date i like i enjoy her time but i want to get together again don't turn into a whiner or to a harasser or to a mean upset guy if it didn't work out it didn't work out now if you're investing lots of money on a first date and spend lots of money at a restaurant stuff like that and she says no that may be your choice that you made not, you made the best choice i recommend first of all by the way if you're going out with somebody let me just do this caveat since I talked yesterday about women dating men women men dating women let me speak to this one about the pre-date i've talked about this on summits before when i've been interviewed and i said the thing about it is a lot of people do is that the the format of that first date is such a lot of pressure both you got to make sure you're presentable you look the right way you got to be sexy enough and happy enough and strong enough and spend enough money and all this stuff and stuff and i said if you're going on the first date with somebody you've met before do a pre-date first find a place in daytime whether it's coffee whether it's ice cream whether it's a walk in the park or by the beach somewhere you can meet daytime where you can be casual relaxed cheap because the thing is, if you're doing a lot of dating and you haven't met the right one yet, you may not want to spend all your money on one date. You might want to just, you know, keep your options open, so to speak. Choose a way that you can meet, again, public place, somewhere that's inexpensive so you can get to know each other first. And then you go, you know what, I'm liking this a lot. Let's go on a real date. Maybe a real first date. So the first chance you get together is not really the date. It's a, I call it a pre-date. It's a really a chance to verify that you like this person enough to go on a proper date with. So if you do have this desire to spend lots of money on your first date, at least you've done a, a, um, a preview to see that's worthwhile and worth doing. So that's, that was six and that was number seven. Okay, that's in, that's enough, seven, seven keys. That'll help you with some stuff. Um, a lot of these I also spoke to yesterday again. I did speak yesterday about keys for women, about being successful on a date, and some of them parallel what I talked about today for men. So if you didn't watch that broadcast, I invite you to go back and watch that one as well. Um, it's important for both men and women to learn how to be better at dating because most men and women are pretty hokey at it, to be honest. They just swipe on an app, tap on somebody and try to go together with them. It's like, let's build some rapport, have a conversation and, and go somewhere with that. So having said that, um, I'm not a dating expert, <laughs> to be totally transparent. My work is in, the, is in the depths of heart healing and relationship, but I do speak to a lot of my clients about how to prepare and to actually heal their hearts to become ready to go on dates. So this is a lot of things that I've just become aware of from my work with clients and some of my own bad experiences and what I've learned from other people as well. So I hope it's been of use to you. Um, I think I did more more keys here than I did yesterday. So if you watch yesterday's broadcast, this one may be more useful to you. Both ways can work. Um, just so you know, I do have a couple of offerings right now that I've been promoting and sharing, one of which is for the people who want to learn how to love themselves more and come back to themselves. I have a course called Coming Home to Yourself. It's my newest offering. It's a group course that's starting very shortly. I keep postponing because I want to get more people together to join it, just to be transparent. And it is a pay what you want course. It's a group program runs, right now it's two to three months. I'm still working all the elements, but it's self-support, self-honoring, self-confidence, self-trust, and all the different self things that give you back to yourself. So if you want more information than that, I'll put the link in the comments so you can check out the page. Again, it's pay what you want. You'll find it on the page when you check it out. Um, if you want help in the area of love and, love and relationships, I will leave a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk and we can go from there. Um, I appreciate you watching as always. This is my daily broadcast every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook, Facebook Live First, which is facebook.com facebook forward slash Barry Selby. If you haven't watched my broadcast before, I invite you to watch my replays because I've got 700 and something plus broadcasts now on my personal, my business page on Facebook and on my YouTube channel. So on my business page, which is barryselby.author, you can check out my replays. If you're watching on YouTube, I have a YouTube channel called Barry Selby. All my social media is my name. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine where all these live. This is my journey to keep sharing, inspiring, and waking people up to love, to life, to having better relationships, and to enjoy their life more fully. So I invite you to check those out because it may be abuse. You might find one there that might change your life, perhaps. Um, again, I'll put a link in the comments for for my coming home to yourself and also a discovery session with me. And uh, with that, oh, if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, ponderings about this this topic, please put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off, both here if you're here on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, 
I think that's it. I appreciate you watching as always, and I'll be back in tomorrow with more fun and games, um, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I, I appreciate you being here, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.